Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. I am here uh, doing yet another exciting interview with someone that I care about deeply. I have the um, joy of interviewing a longtime friend and someone that um, I consider to be like a daughter. Uh, her name is Sarah, and she is got quite the um, and one that uh, I believe you're going to love listening to. So she has just waved at me, and she's ready to go, and so she'll be logging on. Hi, Sarah. Hello. How are you? Oh, it's always good to see you. Always good to see you, too. I'm glad to be here. How are things in California? Really, really good. I've only been here two days. Um, before that, I was in Spain. So just dealing with a bit of jet lag, but everything is good. The weather's good. Everything is beautiful here at this time of the year. I hear, and I've been there a couple times, but I hear the weather is just incredibly steady and wonderful. Oh, yeah. It's super. Right <laughs> now, it's so good. So much better than Spain, actually. <laughs> Well, I have to tell you, when we talked yesterday, I was kind of jealous of your whole setup. Uh, you had... <laughs> yeah, I always escape whenever it gets really, really cold. And then, yeah, in the winter time, I just try to find the warmest destination and then retreat there for a period of time. So, And, and wisely done because of how much you travel. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, yeah. So, but, but for those uh, uh, viewers of mine that don't know you, why don't you just take a moment, if you wouldn't mind, just introduce yourself. I am Sarah. Um, many people on the internet know me as the Nomadic Dreamer. I have been traveling the world for eight years. Um, I have been traveling alone all of this time, but um, I just fell in love this year. So now I'm traveling with my boyfriend, which is kind of cool. And yeah, I've visited 125 countries and my goal was to visit all of them. But with the pandemic and with everything, this goal is way harder than um, I even imagined, even when the pandemic started. So um, I coach people um, mostly around energy and mindset. And I've been doing this for many years, as well as public speaking. But with the pandemic as well, not a lot of public speaking events going on right now. Um, it's getting better. So, you know, just adjusting to all this COVID stuff. So, um, but I am a full time traveler. That is what I've been doing. And I love to share the world with people. Well, and and it has, um, for those that don't know, um, Sarah and I have known each other for, I consider a long time. I, I met Sarah when she was just in middle school, right? I was 14 years old. Uh, I feel old just by yeah. you that. <laughs> 14. I think I was 13 just turning 14 when I met you. And I was one lost soul, well, you as were... you know. <laughs> But you were fun, even when you were so-called lost, you were fun. I mean, oh, come on. oh yeah, I was a lot of fun. I was all over the place. I mean, you know, I'm from yeah. a small town of 10,000 people. And my main concern was, Brad, I've got to get out of this place. <laughs> Brad, help me to get out of this place. What do I do? Where do I go? How do I escape this place? And sure yeah. enough, I did. Well, and you and I both were basically of the same mindset there, because I was thinking, I've got to get out of this place. too. <laughs> yeah, small town, small town mentality is very, very difficult for someone with a soul like mine. Mm -hmm. um, I have an adventurous soul. I've always had that, as you know, um, <laughs> since I was 13 or 14 years old. So my goal was just to go and do something beyond um, the town of Mountain Home, Arkansas. And you have done all that and more. Um, I both... have done all that and more. <laughs> <laughs> so um, awesome. Well, in case, uh, obviously, there's a large group that doesn't know our history. Um, Sarah and I met um, when I was cough, cough, a youth pastor um, at that point, um, um, blindly following the ways of religion, uh, I guess you could say. Um, and when I mean religion, I mean uh, American uh, Christianity, uh, conservative Christianity, uh, a system, if you will, um, a, a big wheel that keeps on turning for no, uh, no purpose. But anyways, besides that. Um, and so watching Sarah grow up um, was a joy because she immediately worked her way into our hearts. Um, she worked her way into my kids' hearts. Um, they adore her greatly. Uh, you say Sarah's name in our household and immediately smiles come across their faces. 
I mean, I've been watching them since they were babies. So, I mean, of course, they hopefully they have a good image of me. <laughs> they do. They love you. And my daughter especially loves you. Um, you know, um, and so it has, it has been a joy to see the impact that you've had on their lives uh, as well. And so that's why it's really important for me to talk to you because your journey has taken you in many different places physically, but also um, it's taking you in many different places um, spiritually. Uh, and so tell me something, why don't you give a little, a little background to your spirituality um, growing up and uh, a little bit of where you're kind of moving now. Um, I didn't have spirituality growing up. I had religion, very organized religion. Um, I was super religious um, my whole entire life until I was 26 years old. Um, from my first memories of life, I was going to a Methodist church, then I switched to a Baptist. And um, yeah, my whole life was just an organized religion. And it wasn't until I started traveling the world and experiencing new cultures and new ways of thinking that I shifted away from organized religion, which for me is very confined, to uh, something more open and free and loving and encompassing, which is my own spiritual journey and um, spirituality. Okay, and so I, I, I want to go through this process um, because you came home, even during college, you were unsettled uh, in the way of your spirituality. And so I could tell you were exploring. You said as much that you were exploring. And so, you know, being the good Baptist preacher I was, I, I was fine with that, which isn't really normal, but I was fine with that. But I was a little concerned because your ideas and your thoughts challenged me to look outside of the box, per se. Okay? And I think that's what was most unique is, is your thoughts and your struggles were some of the same ones I'd have within, but was afraid to explore that you, I don't know if I've ever told you that, but, but you pushed me to look outside my box. A lot, oh, of, <laughs> a lot of pastors would say, no, not good. Right. I mean, yeah. they would shut you down, but I was listening to your questions and it caused me to question a little bit more. And a large part of that was, uh, and I've shared this before a lot because of the miscarriage my wife and I had, began to crumble those foundations that I had before. Uh, but then you came along and uh, during those times of questioning, just started asking those questions. Um, and so I felt, I felt safe to ask those questions with you, whether or not I voiced them. And so I really appreciate that about you. What is it that was overseas, spiritually speaking, that really challenged you the most? Like what, what was it that slowly or dramatically or whatever, um, start to change your perspective? Well, I lived in Spain for many years. And while I was in Spain, I was surrounded by people that had no organized religion. And that was my first taste of just being around people that weren't just some Southern Baptist people or just super religious. Because I did go to a Christian college as well. My boyfriends were Christian. Everyone was Christian. So it was my first time to go into a place where people had open minds. I have never at that point um, been friends with a Muslim person. And that was a huge thing for me. And I actually gave a TEDx talk on this in Spanish um, in Spain many years ago of how I was so afraid of Muslim people. I was so afraid of just Islam and just the whole religion in general. And it wasn't until I went to the language school that I started really becoming friends with this girl that was Muslim. And we became best friends during this experience. And we started to talk about the religion, talk about different ways of living. And then I had my atheist and agnostic friends that lived in Spain. I mean, of course, Spain, people go to mass and people are Catholic. But at the same time, they have a pretty open mind, at least my friends did. And over the years that I was living there, um, they started to really plant seeds of, Sarah, do you really think that your American way, your Baptist or Methodist way is the right way? Do you really, really think that every single person that doesn't believe in Jesus Christ as their personal God and savior is actually going to burn in hell? Like, how is that even loving in the first place? And how can you even believe that? So I started to open my mind. And then in 2015, I started to travel the world completely on my own. So I left Spain 
And that is where I made the final decision of this is not for me. It is good for many people and people out there listening that um, really confide in a um, organized religion, then I think it's great for many people. This is only my journey. Um, but I switched and I became more um, involved in spirituality and finding my own personal power um, as I started to travel the world. All right. And so we um, got a couple comments here um, <laughs> of, of Tetris, who I know, a uh, magnificent person, says good afternoon. She is a, a wonderful person. Good and afternoon. Then, well, I, I might butcher this. Moscoso, Moscoso, 448. Um, this girl, listen, this girl, she was in my house in Ecuador during the pandemic, um, has, has logged on as well. Um, and so, uh, obviously, Sarah has been in a lot of places. What, 125 countries? Is that right? Yeah, I've been in 125 countries, but part of my experience and part of what changed my whole opinion about religion and lifestyle is I have been hosted by over 250 individuals. Um, wow. This is families, singles, couples, but 250 families across the 125 countries. So not only did I travel, I didn't travel to stay in five-star hotels or just stay in hotels in general, I have been, not as much now, but um, before this, before meeting my boyfriend, I had stayed in places just being in the house with people, getting to know them, getting to eat with them, share life, share just their ideas. And so it's a different way of traveling. It's way more personal and you get to know the culture a lot more. So people joining in this conversation, sure. I'm, I probably stayed in their house at some point. Um, at some point, just <laughs> probably having the same kind of conversation that we're having right now about religion and how I actually freed myself from religion, which is something I've never, ever shared online before. Um, but it's something that I think is really important and something I'm not afraid to talk about or ashamed of. Actually, I am so free and relieved and happy. And oh, my God, just life opened up. I'm so happy. And my boyfriend just entered in. So I'm really happy now, too. So. Uh, which one is he? He's paramedic approved. Uh, all right. Paramedic approved. Yes. I had the pleasure of seeing him for the first time yesterday. Yeah. And luckily, he has the same type of mentality as I do. Um, he has never really been a religious person. Very spiritual, very intuitive. But um, we are free from this and i've never in my life met someone more loving than him and it's not from some religion it's coming from the fact that he's just a really good person and and yeah so we're really excited to explore different different paths outside of organized religion and that's what we're doing right now all right so one of the things I want to point out here that in case anybody missed it, that is joining on is you have traveled 125 different countries, but you have stayed. And I remember this conversation I had with you, you stayed on people's couches, floors, wherever. And those, and you paid for this yourself. Okay. So this was not something that was funded by somebody else. This wasn't yes. living in luxury per se. Um, you got to know people and, and you got to experience life with them. And at first, you know, when I remember we talked to you were younger, I was like, oh, man, that's a little scary because, you know, I mean, you're going out there on your own. But, man, I tell you what, you were you were laser focused and you were going no matter what and and the courage you had. But also the the viewpoint you had of humanity, I think, was really, really, really refreshing um, that said, hey, there are there are good people out there. You yeah, know. that's actually a very interesting point that you mentioned. I also said this in my TEDx talk is there are more people that are willing to help you than hurt you um, out there. But you just have to change that mentality because we're so programmed to think that it's just like Taken, the movie Taken, where you are a pretty girl. You just go out into the world and then something happens. They're watching you and they take you. But if you go out with that idea that everyone is out to get you, you're going to just go with a different type of energy. But if you really go out there thinking that there is good in every single person, of course, you have to be careful. I mean, I've traveled to some of the most dangerous places on Earth um, on, 
all by myself. So I'm not oblivious to this. I've had many things that have happened to me, but yes, there are bad people that I don't even know. I mean, they don't do good things. I don't like to really say, oh, they're just horrible people. They right. just are in desperate situations where they're just trying to feed their family. And so they may do something bad, but yeah, there are not good people out there. But if you go out there just thinking, you know, there are people that are willing to help you and um, support you, then you'll meet these people every single day. And I am a testimony to that. I've met so many amazing people and had so many great conversations. So, And so coming out of that into, you know, or growing through that into your own spirituality, um, you yourself are a life coach. And uh, you, I've heard you talk. Um, uh, sometimes in Spanish where I didn't understand it. Uh, and sometimes I did understand it. And one thing that really came across to me was um, your strength and what you have to say about our inner being and, and how we have what we need within us. Uh, would, you, would you explain that a little bit more, your, your, your focus on that? Yeah, this is actually a really cool story. This is where it all began. I was walking the Camino de Santiago. It's, um, it was about 500 miles, so a thousand kilometers um, from France all the way to the west coast of Spain. And I can remember just being on that hike. I was super religious at the time when I started and I was praying to God every single day, God, give me strength. God, help me. Please get me through this. And I was seeking a strength that was outside of me. And I was getting worse, actually, as I went on. I was, I mean, you know how I was during that hike. My legs were falling apart. Um, I had blisters. I had to go to the doctor. I didn't think I was going to make it. It was just really harsh conditions. And the more I prayed, nothing happened. And then one day, something just dawned on me. I was thinking, wait a minute, what am I praying to? I'm praying for something outside of me when what I should be doing is acknowledging that this power lives within me. I have the personal power through my mindset, through my mindset, through my subconscious mind. I have the ability to tap into something eternal, something powerful, something that created this universe. And I have the ability to tap in and draw my strength from that. And that was really exciting. So instead of praying, oh God, give me, give me, give me outside of me, I started acknowledging that power within me. And every single day got better from there because it's about personal empowerment. Personal empowerment is so exciting because you realize that it's in your control, your mindset. And I mean, there are some things that are outside of your control, of course but a lot of it is with your own, within your own mindset. And all you have to do is start to really reprogram your subconscious mind and crazy things can happen. So it's not about a God that lives outside of us, but really our inner God, we have this ability within us and that's exciting. It's so, it has changed my life in so many ways because now all it is is personal empowerment. Anything that I want to do, I want to travel the world. I want to create a business. I want to go to some of the craziest places on earth. I want to achieve everything on my bucket list. I want to do anything that I can do it. It's all within my power. And that's what it's all, this has been about is leaving the religion in order to find spirituality. And that comes with freedom and it's life changing. I tell you, I, I remember you on that road. Um, your feet and oh my god you were you were falling apart um, yeah. and then yeah you turned it around and made it um, and then to see what happened after you got done with that journey I mean you start your own business you you suddenly have clarity of what you're doing and there's a confidence in you I'd never seen before either come out of that um, and it's interesting because my life turned around when I got out of religion and I started focusing. you know I did that shit before you know, I wasn't something else making me do that or anything like that. I actually accomplished what I accomplished in the past because I wanted to accomplish it. Um, and, and that was very empowering to me, um, knowing that that was that and it wasn't something outside myself giving me that power um, at the same time. Um, so you yeah. came through that. We did have a question that came in. Um, it's from uh, uh, Kelly Cordelia. 
Cordelia. Sorry if I said that wrong. I said, what has been your most challenging, your, your, I'm sorry, what has been uh, most challenging life changing experience throughout your travels? The most life changing experience through my travels is 100%. Um, it's actually a website called Couchsurfing. And so through Couchsurfing, this is where you, they connect travelers to local people. And through this website, they have millions of users. And this is where I found all of these families. It wasn't just, I randomly showed up to a country, hey guys, who wants to let me sleep in their house or sleep on their couch? It wasn't like that. So there's an application that organizes this so that can actually happen. And again, use it to over 250 times and it's been amazing. And this has been the number one experience that has shifted my mindset, that has given me purpose while traveling. And it has, oh my gosh, it's changed my whole entire outlook on people in this world. I don't look at the world like many people in Arkansas, for example, when I tell them I'm going out, tell them I'm going out to travel, they say, oh, Sarah, the world is a really dangerous place. You can't go out there. What are you thinking? You're going to die. Something's going to happen. You're going to get kidnapped. Something horrible is going to happen. And I'm like, I've been doing this for eight years now. Nothing horrible has happened to me. Yes, I've had some unfavorable situations happen to me um, with getting robbed and some other things. But so many good things have happened to me as well. And this is just to show you that the news, the media, all it does is brainwash you to be fearful, to think that there is so much bad in the world and they forget to focus on all the good people out there. So the couch surfing has really shaped my life. And then the second one is the Camino de Santiago, walking 31 days across the mountains in horrible conditions. It was raining and storming and I was all alone and I had the pain and the, oh, it was just so, and I was, 15 or 15 to 20 pounds more than I am now was not in the best shape of my life. And I just said, Hey, I'm not going to train at all. I'm just going to go walk across the mountain by myself. And that's what I did. So that also is personal empowerment because when you do something that originally you think, Oh, this is going to be impossible. And then you get done with it. You're like, Oh my God. So after I finished that, I said, there's nothing that I can't do. I'm going to continue to go on. So I travel, I actually hitchhiked in the beginning. Okay. In the beginning of my travels, I was a little bit crazier. I was hitchhiking and doing all this stuff. Now I'm not doing that right now because I'm traveling a different way, but still it was personal empowerment. It was just going out and being fear, fearless and um, really just living the life that I've always imagined. So those were the two experiences that really shifted my, my mindset and gave me so much freedom and clarity and all of these good things. So let me ask you a, a personal question here, if I may. Um, of course. Of course. Here we go. And you can always tell me, just shut up, Brad. So um, I think I've told you that many times in your well, life. You have told me many times, but that's, <laughs> but that's not focus on those. Um, so um, you have this new view on life. All right, new view on spirituality compared to where you came from. Um, how did your family react to it? My family, does, my family really doesn't know. That's okay. the thing is, these are just, you know, there are topics that you should never discuss at the dinner table. Religion, politics, <laughs> mm, actually the majority of the things in Arkansas you should, oh, as someone from Arkansas just enters in my, in the group right now. Oh, as I'm talking about Southern people, it's not all Southern people. It's not. Mm -hmm. But the people that I was surrounded by in Arkansas, of course, they are open-minded people. But the people that I was surrounded by, um, of course, you just don't have these conversations with them because they're not going to understand. Because before traveling the world, I never understood it. I never could see what I see now. And so how am I supposed to just help my family to understand the years and years of lessons that I have learned, the kindness that I have been met with, all of these amazing situations that caused me to have so much hope and so much love and so much 
just faith in people out there. I can't really, because when I go home, it's, oh, did you see the news? Oh, what's happening in Afghanistan? What's happening in Yemen? What's happening in Syria? All of these really awful things, but yet there's so much good out there, but it's just about what you focus on, what you focus on expands. And so I can't really get my family or people to understand it. But there are people like you, which there's very few people that have actually shown real genuine interest in my travels and what I've learned. You have been one of these people. And if you do talk to me, you can see just the amazing experiences that I have. And yes, I may have one bad experience, but there are another 100, 200, 300 great experiences to just outweigh that one bad experience. So um, I don't try to convince my family um, of anything that I believe or nor do I talk to them. I just, I have very little time with them in general. And, and the people that are interested, like my aunt, for example, of course I will share my story with her. I'll share my beliefs. If people ask me questions, then of course I will share, but I'm not pushy because I also do respect organized religion. I respect people that follow it. Um, it's just not for me. Just like eating meat is not for me. It's for other people. We all have our likes and dislikes and we believe in one thing. Some people believe in the other. And it's not my job to convince other people that spirituality and my way is the right way because my way is not the right way. There is no right and wrong way. And the more you travel the world, the more you realize that you don't know anything, anything. The people that don't travel think that they know it all. But if, and then if you travel, you realize how little you actually do know. And that's how I am. It's just kind of a humbling place of, I don't know, just doing what works for me, doing what gives me peace. And the base of everything that I do is just love. That's really all it comes down to. If I can just find a place in spirituality like I have just based in love, then great. But a lot of these organized religions are not, not based in love, as you know, because people have treated you really bad over the years. And I've seen it directly with my eyes. Well, I, I love what you said there. Um, or a couple, I loved everything you said, but a couple things is right. I, I never really thought about the concept, how difficult it would be for you to put that into words to your family um, with all those years of experience and travel and, and trying to somehow get that down to a little American, you know, um, outline per se. Um, and you're right. I think America in general vilifies the rest of the world or you see all these bad things that go with it. Um, and, and so one of the things that immediately came to mind when you were talking is I, I in my past, I preached about being more. And you are one of the few people I know um, that actually took that and didn't take it the biblical route, but took it the personal route and became more than anybody ever saw you becoming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's actually really funny. I'm gonna say a quick thing really quick, but... Um... When I was thinking of Nomadic Dreamer as my name on the internet, I got this inspired by you and Sabrina. I I don't know if I've ever shared this to you, with you, but the concept, like one thing, okay, you've said a lot of things over the years, especially when we were really, both of us were really religious. Um, but one thing that you really drilled in my head since I was 13 years old was you need to dream big. I have this written, you, you and Sabrina wrote me, I have it in my stuff, um, I actually sent it to you not too long ago, of a letter that you guys wrote me in a Bible. I, t I threw the Bible out, I gave it to someone, and then I actually kept this piece of paper. But it was more than anything, dream big, Sarah, don't be afraid to dream big. And so when it came time to pick my brand name, which is Nomadic Dreamer, I was like, okay, I'm gonna be nomadic, but then you know, my favorite two mentors in my life, which are you and Sabrina, have always told me to be a dreamer. So that's where I got the second half of my dreamer. So yeah, you have taught me a lot of things about 
you know, religion and things that I kind of one in, in one ear, out the other. And, you know, we both evolved and changed over the years. But the one thing that you've told me since I was a ch since I was that age was dream big. You screamed this at me multiple times. I don't know if you remember this, but I took it to heart. And, um, you know, I really do believe that I would not, not, not be where I am right now if it were not for you two. I mean, it was having t you both as mentors, as, you know, a lost teenage girl was the best thing that ever happened to me. My path would not be as amazing as it has been. Um, so, you know, your path has changed a lot, but you never have, you never can underestimate the impact that you had, even as a pastor, um, the seeds that you planted um, have been with me forever and they've just blossomed into something so beautiful. So I only hope to have that type of impact on someone one day um, that you guys have had on me. So yeah, my path is really good, but you guys have very much planted those seeds and you know watered it and watched it watched it bloom well i, I i'm incredibly humbled right now i'm not going to cry online because that's uh it's not what i'm going to do but... i feel my i'm having shaky uh, shaky um voice a shaky voice well, but I, I i i you know how we how we feel about you and how much we love you um yeah. and so um, and how proud we are. But in order not to cry, we'll move on a little bit here. Um, so that being the case, let me ask you this. Um, if you had any advice for a, it, it doesn't matter the age, anybody that's looking to um, uh, experience more out of life, right? What would, what would you tell them? If you want to experience more in life, stop giving a shit about what people, what people think. Honestly, this is the biggest problem I see right now is people care so much about what other people think. And you think like, you're really fearful. You're not putting yourself out there. You're holding yourself back because of what? Because of the opinions of other people? Like the opinions of other people, it just seems... I mean, of course, I have this fear sometimes as well, but it's still, if I had to tell anyone anything, it would be just stop caring about what other people think. Be you, be the authentic version of you and stop comparing yourself to everyone on social media. You can literally scroll on social media and in five seconds, you can be depressed about your life. But when you're scrolling, your life is magnified. You're looking at everyone's life and you're seeing it. And it's just like, you got to step back a little bit. Instead of comparing yourself to everyone on your screen and all of your Instagram followers, step back, get a global perspective. If you want to be really grateful, compare yourself to the people that are less fortunate, um, less fortunate as you and really start to change your perspective. So not caring, not comparing, and just putting yourself out there. If you want to create your own business, start creating your own business. If you want to do something, go to college or study something, stop caring about oh, well, I wonder what my mom's going to think, or I wonder what my friends are going to think, or it doesn't matter. Just put yourself out there because I promise you, if you don't, you're going to get 10 years down the road and you're going to look back and be like, oh my God, why didn't I do what I wanted to do? And in 10 years from now, you're probably going to get an attitude of, I really don't care what other people think because, you know, the more time goes on, I'm sure you can attest to this. <laughs> the more you start to say, I don't care what other people think. Mm -hmm. So start now developing this mindset and do all the things that you want to do. Create a bucket list, literally write down every single thing that you want to do on paper. Um, because a goal is not a goal until it's written down. I truly believe this. So start writing it down, get creative in what you want to do and start being specific and putting out in the universe specifically what you want to do. And the most important part is action because you can put all of this out into the universe, but if you don't take action, then you've missed the most important step because standing in front of a mirror and saying, 
oh, I going to do this. I am so beautiful. I am this and I am that and I'm going to travel the world. And all of this is really great. You can just make yourself feel better. But until you freaking take action, nothing is going to happen in your life. So those are, I didn't give you just one. I gave you just a, a whole list of things here, but they're all so important and they all are connected. Just got to develop this attitude of just like, do you, just do you be the best version of you and you'll get so far in life. You know, I don't know if I've shared this with you, um, but listening to you talk about that, um, I, I learned from you, um, and your boldness that when after I left the church um, and I thought about what I wanted to do, um, life coaching came up and I looked at what you did um, and I, I kind of studied what you did. And then I remember looking and saying, wow, you know, I may have been one of those people to say, hey, listen, uh, dream bigger. Um, but it's like you were screaming it right back at me the more I watched you and the way you lived. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. this is what I'm going to do because this is what I want to do. And I don't care what anyone else says. And, and so it was through your example that during one of my darkest times three years ago, when I walked out of the church, helped me to gain my footing and pursue a dream that I do. So, I mean, that was, that was really, really, you were an encouragement to me. Uh, when it came right down to it, just so you know that. Well, I really appreciate that because sometimes when you're doing like what I'm doing right now is just traveling and putting inspirational content, putting it out in English, putting, putting it out in Spanish. And, you know, I've taken a, a pretty big break lately because I was really full force into this um, for many years of my life. But it's so interesting and so encouraging to hear the amount of people that I actually have been able to impact over the years just by being bold enough to go out and face my fears when most people said, oh, no, Sarah, you're freaking insane. What are you doing? Are you traveling West Africa by yourself? Are you doing this? Are you walking through the mountains by yourself? Like, how are you doing all this by yourself? But something just kept telling me to go and continue to just go and go and go and dream big things for my life. And that's what I did. And I'm so encouraged to hear, even now I get messages of people that just said, thank you for your, without even saying anything, just by the example that I've been able to live. Um, it's inspired them to take massive action and do something incredible with their life because it's really great just to be all talk and be like, oh, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. And I'm like, oh, la, 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 la. Uh -huh. Where is the freaking action? If you don't have action and you're just talking and planning and writing in your planner and making it color coded and putting it and putting the highlighter and blah, 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 you're just wasting your time until you really just say enough is enough. I'm going to take action. Like if you want to lose weight, then work to lose weight. If you want to get out of debt, get out of debt. I, before I started this journey, I had to, you know, my debt free journey. I didn't have enough money to go travel the world. I had to work day in and day out as a nurse in order to pay off all of my debt. And yes. then I just moved abroad. I quit my nursing job and I went and took a job for $400 a month. Like, Sometimes you just have to take massive action because that massive action will just quantum leap you into your dreams and your goals. And sometimes you're going to look crazy. When I told my mom and my dad that I was leaving my nursing job and I was going to sell everything and move abroad and take a $400 a month job, they were like, are you freaking kidding? you kidding me? You've been in school for so many years of your life. Like, are you stupid? But that's what you have to do is just that action, 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 action. I, I remember worrying about that for you as well. Uh, yeah. I was inspired by the way you paid off debt, uh, which is great. Um, just the girl pastor says, hey, I know her. She's awesome. Um, and, and I was inspired by the way you paid off debt. But here's what I want to focus on is when you went overseas, um, to me, 
you broke down the 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 struggle of viewing the world rest of the world as bad and so you brought the best of humanity forward um and made me feel better about humanity made me realize that my view um and what i had been indoctrinated with was was false uh when it came down to it and so um i don't know for those that have been watching this um sarah has a significant impact on different cultures many different cultures not just american cultures um i was looking i was talking to the other day i was like do you even realize you have a hundred thousand followers on instagram and, and i don't think you even realize that at that moment because you're not about the follows i know? really don't you care don't, you don't <laughs> right you, you really could care less the thing i love about you you're about people you're about helping people and helping people be more and realize more about themselves and how to live their life than about getting followers or being an influencer. And this is, this is what's impressed me about your humble heart because you've been on TV before. You've been interviewed on radio stations time and time again. And you kept plugging and kept sharing your message. And it has become a rallying cry, I feel like, for a lot of people. Because, you know, just like anytime I question something, I can hear your words in my mind. You know, it's you're so authentic and so real um, with that. And you're right. You don't apologize for who you are. Uh, I wish I had better, better grasp of that sometimes, you know, but it takes a while to reprogram the brain. Right. So um, I just want people to know that there's much success as you've had. Um, number one, yes, it's taken hard work, but it was always about making humanity better as well. Um, yeah, that has been important to me. And actually, while I traveled, I took um, a position basically to give a five minute segment on a 100,000 watt radio station that went across the south of the US. And I did that for three to four years. And people are obviously afraid to travel and the majority of the Americans don't even have passports. And if you start looking at the south of the US, it's even less. So I did Motivational Saturday with the Nomadic Dreamer, and I got on this 100,000 watt um, radio and I shared a positive message from a different part around the world. And that was my, my whole line is, hi, I'm the Nomadic Dreamer, and this week I'm in Sierra Leone, or this week I'm in Liberia. Um, and I just share something positive from a different place around the world. And I did this so many <laughs> For, well, for four years, I don't know how many um, episodes I actually did, but a lot of them. And that was my way of also giving back. And I mean, of course, it was good promotion for me as well. But it was my way of really showing a different side of travel that people don't typically see, especially coming from the south of the U.S. And, you know, I wasn't traveling with a guy that was there to protect me. I was traveling completely alone mm. through 120 something of these countries. I just met my boyfriend this year. Um, so I was all alone. So it was a whole different perspective because if I would have traveled through all of these countries with a boy, they would have said, oh, you know, he was there to protect you. But being in some very dangerous places all alone and staying on the couch or the house or wherever of these strangers, because they were all strangers, it brought a whole different twist to the situation because people are thinking, wow, uh, the world must not be as bad as I think it is because if this girl is going out in this world and just having such good experiences, then maybe I'm really brainwashed by the media. So I took the segment in media, that um, five minute segment, and I brought positivity into the lives of so many thousands of people through those years. So that's what I try to do is bring a little impact. Um, yes, I got a lot of followers back in the day because I did a lot of TV. I did radio. I did all kinds. I was in a, on a reality TV show. I did all of this stuff. Um, but this is from like 2016 and 17. I grew a lot. And now I just don't do really much to grow anymore because it's not about the followers like it was in the past. Right now, it's about the impact and trying to really inspire people in a different way. So, 
So this is my question, and, and I have not asked you this question before that I can recall, okay? No, 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 no. Right? Um, have you thought about writing a book? I actually have a book written, and it's in Spanish, and it's with a publisher, and I decided to write it in my second language, and um, it's been with a publisher for a while with COVID things. Yeah, yeah. Things slowed down a lot, and I wrote a children's book, and I wrote a regular book in Spanish, both of them. I haven't published them, but um, again, life has really twisted upside down a bit over the last two years. So everything has been on hold, and wait times are, I mean, to do a book right now in Spain, I mean, the wait list was like three years. So anyways, um, but I did write something, maybe I'll just self-publish it myself and um, let people hear because um, we never even got to this and we don't have enough time to get to it. But um, I think the coolest part of what I'm doing and my story is the fact that like most people when they say, oh, you're traveling the world, you're American, you're so lucky, a rich California girl. And I'm like, okay, first of all, <laughs> Like, I'm not rich. I was not rich. Like, when I started traveling, I had no money. I don't come up from a family with money. Um, very rough childhood as far as family goes. Um, not your normal life. And a lot of obstacles. I mean, my own dad was in prison during my whole childhood, which was like a hard, hard thing to deal with. And of course, that brought a lot of obstacles and confusion to, into my life. So what I try to get people to see is like, yeah, I'm living my dream life. I am literally living the best life that I could possibly even imagine. And now that I have love here, oh my God, it's, it just went from like a five to like a 100. But what I want people to realize is that it didn't come from just having a lot of luck and having a family that provided the way and having just this good structure. I came from a situation where I had to work my ass off, work a lot of hours and create this life for myself. So many people that are just listening and thinking, oh, she's so lucky, of course. Like she's yeah. living this dream and it's so easy, but it has not been easy. And if people know my background, then if they knew my background, they could realize that it's been a journey to get here and it's, Still, I still have my obstacles. I still face a lot of stuff, but it doesn't matter how much you are faced with. The, the point is you just have to keep moving forward. If you come from a background of abuse, of any kind of drug abuse, of any type of situation, that's not an excuse. Like you can, if you come from that situation, you can also break away from that, break down those walls and stop that cycle and create the life that you've always wanted. And I have literally broken the cycle of alcoholism in my family, of drug abuse, of so many things. And it doesn't go on from here. And that's exciting. So it's not about luck. It's about hard work and really being clear on what you want in life. And once you know that, you can work towards that goal. I definitely, um, you know, I've had the the struggle and joy of seeing where you've come from, um, the, the struggles you've had and, and, and people need to understand you're right. You, you didn't have the money. Um, you didn't even necessarily have a solid family unit. If I can say that, um, you did this on your own. Um, and it was incredibly brave. I think that's the word. Um, you, you sought something, you went after it. And so, um, she's, she is not a rich California girl, um, that had I've never even been to California. Now I live in California. <laughs> my, my boyfriend is from California. So this is my, yeah, my first time to visit this year. So no, not a rich California girl. I didn't even have a freaking passport until I was 23 years old. Never had never traveled outside the country. So it's not the idea that most people abroad have of, Oh, you're just an American girl yeah. with all these opportunities. And when people meet me, they instantly realize that I am a very humble person. Like I just came from nothing and I created the life that I've always wanted by manifesting it, by believing it, by being specific about what I want and by a lot of hard work and overtime. 
Yes. And uh, there was a comment in our box um, from uh, BG's girl, um, who I know Kelly says that was, that's why I was going to ask. It would definitely be a bestseller for the book. So um, I'm sure it's hard that to be a bestseller these days. <laughs> I know, right. So, um, okay. I know we could talk forever. So let me go ahead and um, ask you one more question. Um, as we wrap up, uh, what is the best way for people to follow you on your journey and then maybe even engage um, and, and, and do this next phase of life with you? Okay, so on Instagram, One Nomadic Dreamer, I mean, I, you can click right here or here or here yeah. or here. One of these places you can click. Um, also, I am redoing my, all of my websites. They're a little outdated. So um, saradod.com is where I offer my coaching services. I focus around mindset. And that's my biggest thing because the mindset has to be right if you want to create the life that you want. So many people don't know what's happening, why they're not achieving what they want. And it's because of something with the mindset, 100%. And you have to really work on that. So that's what I do with people. That's saradaw.com. And also, I don't blog anymore because I used to do that, but it's on nomadicdreamer.com. And yeah, you can just connect with me on Instagram, write me a message, connect, say hello. Um, yeah, that I'm a really easy person to reach. So just awesome. say hello. Awesome. Now, this is going to be posted on my page, um, brad.lifecoach, um, right up there. Um, I am a life coach, a longtime friend of Sarah, which I am so proud to say. And uh, so if as soon as this is posted, obviously, I'll, I'll make sure that her tag is also in the posting uh, for any of my people that want to follow her that may miss this opportunity and may watch this later. Um, so give her a follow. Uh, she is well worth it. Um, and, and she'll change your life uh, for the better. And so, Sarah, thank you so much. Well, let me say one more thing before we get off here. Yeah, if anyone's listening to this and wanting to work with Brad up here, yeah, you're <laughs> up here. I don't know if I'm, yeah, you're up here. Um, he is the real deal. There's very few people that I can actually say that about. I've trusted him with my whole life. He's mentored me since I was 13 years to mentor me now. And in his own special way and I will say that you Brad are the real deal and anyone that gets the opportunity to work with you um, will come out better than when they started but much better um, I can say because you have been my mentor for many many years God I'm 32 years old and you met uh, me when I was 13 <laughs> um, you've mentored me through my whole life so I know that you're the real deal and you doing life coaching does not surprise me at all because this is what you were designed for. I mean, you've basically been life coaching your whole life. You've just transitioned your life coaching to do something online and to speak about a different topic. So anyone wanting to work with Brad, uh, he is the real freaking deal. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. You're uh, welcome. Jeez. Uh, um, okay, so... Now I'm going to go get a tissue and cry. All right. I need a tissue. Um, so, um, listen, thank you so much for your time. Um, uh, and thank you for doing this with me. I've wanted to do an IG Live with you, as you know, um, for a long time. Just, number one, it's selfish because I want to talk to you. Um, yeah. Experiences, really, more than anything else. But um, Yeah, you've been reaching out for a while, but I... I Right, but I been, just finished, you know, I just left, I did 10 countries over the last 14 weeks. So yeah. every time you've reached me, I'm like, oh, I'm in Kyrgyzstan. Oh, I'm in Uzbekistan. Oh, Brad, sorry, I'm in the Middle <laughs> East. Yeah, it's been a crazy last 14 weeks, but I am back in California and I am just ready to chill for a little while. Well, I'm glad you're back in the state um, to where I can actually get you. Um, be able to talk to you. So, but I'm happy because I know that traveling is one of your loves. So, um, lots I'm excited. more to come. Yes, lots more to come. So, thank you again. Um, thank you for everybody that stayed with us through this time and those that are going to be watching later. Um, it is definitely um, listening. Listening to her is empowering. So, I would say go on and follow her 
and and definitely um, listen to what she says has to say because they're words of wisdom. So, thank you, Sarah, very much. I look forward to talking to you later. Okay. All right. Bye. Have uh, a good day. Guys, have a good day. Bye bye. Uh